entrance antiphon. Look to your covenant, O Lord, and forget not the life of your poor ones forever. Arise, O God, and defend your cause, and forget not the cries of those who seek you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, a great blessing to once again be with you as we come together for the celebration of Holy Mass. We take a moment to call to mind God's presence in our life, our Lord's desire to encounter us and our desire for Him. And to prepare ourselves for this encounter, we call to mind our sins, our need for God's mercy, and we ask the Lord for His pardon and peace. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah, came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks, be, to Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. I will hear what God proclaims. The Lord, for he pro proclaims peace. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him. Glory dwelling in our land. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Kindness and truth shall meet. Justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. 
Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and prepare the way of his steps. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I speak the truth in Christ. I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in bearing me witness that I have great sorrow and constant anguish in my heart. For I could wish that myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites. There's the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. There's the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is all, who is over all. God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for his word. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. After he had fed the people, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and proceed him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. While it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once, Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught Peter and said to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, I'm sure all of us have had times in our life where we look around in life, our circumstances, maybe family circumstances, community circumstances, country circumstances, world circumstances, and we may have this feeling that the world is going to end. We may have this feeling like, how long, O Lord, how long? How much more of this can we take? We all know the trials and the tribulations, the winds and the waves that we hear about in the gospel. 
All three of our readings today tell a story of people in the scriptures who are experiencing storms and winds and waves in their life. Let's begin with the prophet Elijah. So Elijah, this great prophet, has been called to speak for God and he has just been in this battle with the gods of Baal. Okay, and so <clears throat> all these gods, um, he's supposed to, to, to prove that his God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, is the true God. And in this conquest, in this battle, Elijah calls down fire from the earth. And the sovereignty of God is proven. You would think Elijah is now victorious, but now Queen Jezebel wants to assassinate him, wants to kill him. And so Elijah, afraid for his life, maybe questioning, Lord, you've called me and you keep sending trials, tribulations, winds, waves. How long, O oh Lord? Where does Elijah go? Elijah goes to the mountain of Horab, Sinai, the same mountain that God appeared to Moses. This is a place of encounter. Elijah is looking for the Lord to show up in his life. He's, he's weighed down by all these afflictions that he's been enduring, these battles, and now being afraid for his life. And we hear the story of God coming to him. God coming not in the wind, not in the fire, not in the earthquake, but in the still, small voice. What is God telling Elijah? Elijah, I'm here. Elijah, I'm with you. Elijah, I know that there are trials and tribulations in their life and your response to be my prophet, to be my servant. But know, Elijah, that I am with you. I will console you. I will continue to give you the grace that you need to be whom I've called you to be. Now we move to St. Paul. St. Paul, in this passage in the ninth chapter of Romans, is crying out. What is Paul's cry? What's his lamentation? Paul is distraught that so many of his Jewish brothers and sisters are not embracing the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, they've been given so much, the law, the worship, the promises, the patriarchs, all these things. But Christ who has come to be that answer for them of all that they've longed for and hoped for, they don't accept them. But Paul is consoled. I was thinking of the passage where Paul laments of the thorn in his flesh. And these things can probably represent many things in Paul's life, maybe his own personal struggles, but I would also imagine the frustration of wanting to spread the faith and running into obstacles and roadblocks that those are not embracing the faith that he has found in the Lord Jesus that has changed his life. He wants it to change their life. And our Lord's response to Paul, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. Paul, in these struggles, in your own tribulations, your own persecution that you endure, oftentimes through the hands of your own brothers and sisters in the Jewish faith, the Romans, through your enemies. Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. In this time where you may feel distraught, may you may feel just, Lord, you've called me to this, and I just keep seeing these roadblocks, these trials, these winds, these waves. Where are you, Lord? Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. And then in the gospel, so we come to this famous, famous passage, which finds its place in all four of the Gospels. Jesus has just fed the 5,000. The disciples go out to fish. They're on the Sea of Galilee. There are winds and waves. And at the fourth watch of the night, all of a sudden, our Lord appears. But He's walking on water. Disciples never forgot this. This was a pivotal moment for them where they see, once again, that Jesus of Nazareth, the son of the carpenter, is someone mighty indeed. He is mighty with power. They're afraid at first. They think that he's a ghost. 
And our Lord cries out to him, to them, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Simon Peter, the quintessential foot, foot in his mouth guy, calls out, Lord, if it is you, command that I walk on the water. Come. He begins to walk on the water, and we all know what happens. He begins to seek. He's frightened, and he cries out, Lord, save me. Jesus extends the hand to Peter. Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? He pulls Peter up out of the water, and he gives that profession of faith. Peter gives that profession of faith. Truly, you are the Son of God. For the early Christians, this was a historical event. This was a moment that they saw the sovereignty and lordship of Jesus Christ. But it was also a, an incredible moment that, that would carry great symbolism for them. They who are in the boat, the ark, are the bark of Peter, the ecclesia, the church, called to navigate the winds and ways of this world, recognizes that at times it seems as though the sky is falling down on them and the boat is being tossed about. We all know that in our own life in the church, when we have maybe scandals in the church or trying to navigate the world that is always full of war and violence and division. And our Lord comes in the midst. He walks out to meet us. He shows us His power. And we try to walk on water. We try to do the impossible. We try to do things that are outside of our power. If we don't keep our eyes on Christ, if we don't look at Him, if we don't trust in Him, if we don't believe in Him, we will begin to sink. If we try to do what God has asked us to do by our own powers, we will sink. But then... Look for the hand of the Lord who tells us, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? He extends his hand and he saves us. And we recognize you are the Son of God. Truly you are the Son of God. Lord, you are with me. You are with us. You're with the church. You're with your sons and daughters. And you give us the strength to do the impossible. And so, my brothers and sisters, we, we experience all these moments in scriptures, and there are many, many moments in sacred scripture where we can relate our lives, whether we are in good times or in bad, in sickness or in health, we can relate to our brothers and sisters, our human experience that oftentimes experiences difficulties. And the message is always the same. Our Lord never leaves us alone in those difficulties. Our Lord always comes to be with us. We simply have to look for Him. Look for His hand being extended out to us, often through a brother and sister in Christ. Listen to His voice like Elijah did. Often it's not in the earthquake, the, the big winds or fire. It's in a still, small voice where God speaks to us. When we become um, just frustrated as Paul is that, that you know we're trying to do things for God and we're not seeing that traction we're not seeing that movement trust that God is in work trust that His grace is sufficient trust that our Lord will show us the way today my brothers and sisters wherever we are we place our trust in Jesus we look for Him and we look for the Lord to show us the way Amen Our brothers and sisters, we now offer to God our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Heavenly Father, we now come to you in trust and confidence as we bring to you our needs. For the church, may the hand of the Lord steady each of us across any stormy waters as we serve one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For government officials, may God convict and equip them in working for justice for all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who are facing a trial of faith, may the Lord's gentle whisper and guiding hand be upon them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For this faith community, May God give us the grace to follow him in all things. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our beloved dead, may they soon rest in eternal peace in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And for any special petitions that we hold deep in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, hear and answer these prayers we are presented to you in trust and confidence through the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made accept acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so, 
In company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Mario, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassionate, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we now have the courage to pray. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. <clears throat> Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We now pray our prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. the body of Christ Communion Antiphon. O Jerusalem, glorify the Lord who gives you your fill of finest wheat. Let us pray. May the communion and your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.
Amen. Well, thank you for joining us in Holy Mass. Prayers for you and for your intentions. Please continue to keep all the priests and our diocese and all those who need our prayers in your hearts and prayers. And have a blessed week. God bless you.